week. Anybody remember what it is? <laughs> Studying about the Baptists. Why are we a Baptist church? Well, we need to try to delve into that and see some important things along those lines. Last week, we started out with the biblical start of the church. Where did the church begin? Where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The very first church was in Jerusalem. 120 on the day of Pentecost were filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter preached the great message and 3,000 were added to that church, it says in verse 42, uh, in one day. What an amazing thing that happened there. And then the church just kept growing from there. It got fairly large and... Uh, we see how that persecution came and people scattered everywhere, starting to spread the gospel. Philip went into Samaria. Some Christians went up to Antioch and started a church up there, which later we find Paul and Barnabas in, and then being sent out by that church to be missionaries. They then go all over Asia Minor, Greece, spreading the gospel. More churches are started. And all these churches now are just known as Christian churches. That was it. People were first called Christians at Antioch, it says in the Bible. And that's what they were called, Christians and Christian churches, Christian fellowships. And that's all they were. There were no labels to them whatsoever. But of course, as time goes on, we know that great persecution came to the church under the Roman emperors, ten of them persecuted Christians and churches tremendously. Thousands and thousands were killed. However, under God's tremendous providence and power, the gospel still spread. They could not stamp out Christianity. It kept growing and eventually conquered the Roman Empire, so to speak, by Constantine, the Roman emperor, wanting to know what sign he should fight a battle by and supposedly saw the sign of the cross in the sky said, that's the Christian's cross, so I'm going to embrace Christianity. He issued the Edict of Milan in 313 A.D., saying that Christians would now be allowed to worship as they please. And in 323 A.D., he made the uh, church, Christian church, the church of the Roman Empire. And then the state and church got together. Big mistake. So once the state and church got together, churches started uh, getting together, hierarchy was formed, and eventually in the 400s A.D., the Roman Catholic Church came into existence. And uh, from there, we find great deviation from the early church in their teachings and in doctrines and beliefs. It just tremendously got away from the Bible. But all through those ages and all the way through time, there's been churches and Christians trying to hold on to the truth. And where do the Baptists come from? Well, those early churches were not called Baptist churches. Now, there's four theories of where the Baptists came from, and I wanted to start with that here tonight. Uh, four theories of where Baptist churches come from. First one is called the Apostolic Succession Theory. It says that Baptists began with John the Baptist, which is impossible because John the Baptist did not start the church. He wasn't even involved in the church age. He was a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, prepare the way of the Lord. The church did not begin until after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he can't be the founder of the church. But anyway, uh, they say that, or they say that it began with Jesus, which is correct. And there was a succession then of churches all through those years that were Baptist churches, whether they were in name or not, they were all Baptist churches that followed the principles of the Word of God. Well, there's a book called The Trail of Blood, popularized by J.M. Carroll, and uh, it tries to show this, but he lists the names of some groups there. Paulinchians, Albigenses, Waldenses. You cannot claim any of them as being Baptists like we are today. They did believe in autonomy of the local church, which we really believe in, no state church. They did believe in bapt baptism of believers for the most part, 
But from there, a lot of false doctrines. The Paulicians believed Jesus wasn't God. He was only a man. And uh, Arius taught that too, had to be condemned because of his teaching that way. Arianism, he started a lot of people following him. And so um, they did not follow what were real true teachings of what Baptists would believe or true churches would believe. So it's hard to say. I believe there were true believers all the way through. I really do. But to say these people were Baptists is a little bit of a stretch of the imagination. There's a second uh, theory up here called the Anabaptist kinship theory. Now, Anabaptist means rebaptizers. In the beginning, until the 300s AD, everybody was baptized only after you believed. There was no infant baptism in the early church. It's not taught in the Bible, didn't happen in the early centuries. It started in the 300s AD. Started with an African bishop named Cyril. Cyril said, you know what? If I baptize babies, I'll have them as they grow up. They'll belong to my church the whole time. And so he started doing it. The idea spread to other churches. They said, yeah, we want to keep everybody in our church, so we'll baptize babies, and they'll be a part of our church from the time they're born. And baby baptism came into existence. Well, people said, no, this isn't right. You're baptized only when you're saved. You have to be able to believe on Jesus to be, sa to be saved. And then you're baptized, the Bible teaches. Well, many of the people that accepted Christ had been baptized as babies then. So the people that rebaptized them after they really got saved were called Anabaptists. And there were various Anabaptist groups through the years. So this theory says the Anabaptists were true Baptists. And they are our succession down from the beginning of time. Well, possibility. I'm sure a lot of Anabaptists might have been pretty much where we are in belief. But many of them, too, didn't believe exactly like we believe. They might have baptized people when they believed on Christ. But then they believed in losing your salvation. Or they believed in a lot of strange things that we would not accept today, of course. So that's another thing that's a little bit hard to stretch to believe. Then there's those who say, Baptists are Protestants. What is a Protestant? It's someone who protests. That's a Protestant. Protests. Protests the Roman Catholic Church. And so the founders of the Reformation churches were in the Catholic Church and came out of it. They came out of it, started their churches. Martin Luther who started Lutheranism. He was a Roman Catholic priest who in reading the Bible discovered the just shall live by faith, realized he was believing the wrong thing and said that's the way of salvation, embraced that, and then finally because of all the problems he had with the Catholic Church trying to do him in, he had to start his own group of church in Germany, had the protection of the princes of Germany, and so he was able to start Lutheranism. But you go to others that were started their churches. The Episcopal in our country was the Church of, of England in England. It was all Catholic. Changed to being the Church of England because Henry VIII didn't like that the Pope said he couldn't divorce his wife. He said, fooey on the Pope, I'm divorcing my wife and start my own church. But it was basically a Catholic church. The uh, Church of England had priests and had confessionals and had everything like you do in the Catholic church. And so uh, it just didn't recognize the Pope anymore. So you go through all the Reformation and see these reformers. They were in the Catholic Church and they came out. Where's the Baptist guy who was in the Catholic Church and came out and started Baptist? Doesn't exist. Baptists don't have a founder because churches who were like Baptists existed all the way back to the time of Christ. It's hard to find exact labels for them, but they were there. They finally definitely show up in Europe about the 14 to 1500s. Churches began being named Baptist, not Anabaptist or anything like that, Baptist. And the first English churches, we definitely know about there. First English church, which is this third uh, point up here theory, was started actually in the country of Holland. 
The first English church was started in the country of Holland because the guy who started it, John Smith, was exiled there. And he started a Baptist church, first church to be known as, in, as far as English-speaking people. There was English-speaking people, people in Holland there with him because Holland had uh, freedom of religion. And so he started a church. The fellow who followed him after two years he died, Helwes, went back to England then and started Baptist churches all over the place. And so we know that's how Baptist churches started at least in England, which was actually in the 1600s. And that's what some people say. Baptist churches didn't exist until the time of, of the first ones named in England. Well, that's not really true either. Here's a fourth theory. Baptist in the Roman Catholic Church. Now this is an interesting theory. But this particular theory says the Roman Catholic Church kept developing their doctrines for years, which is true. I have a book in my office on Roman Catholicism, and ever since the 400s till today, they keep changing their doctrines all the time. And uh, did you know they never believed in purgatory till 1250 A.D.? How after 1,250 years since Christ do you start believing in purgatory? Hmm? Praying to Mary, you ever heard Catholics pray to Mary? That wasn't ordered till 1957. 1950. They've put, so anyway, in the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church, with them formulating their doctrines and so on, and the priesthood and the hierarchy with the pope and cardinals and all the things they do, archbishops, all that was in the form. Well, there's a lot of churches that didn't go along with that. But the Roman Catholic Church did not do anything to them. And finally, if they would just recognize the church at Rome as being the mother church, they had some sense of freedom, this theory says, to practice what they wanted. So they believe a lot of Baptists stayed in the Roman Catholic Church, believed their beliefs, practiced their beliefs until the Council of Trent. The Council of Trent was a council called by the Roman Catholic Church to absolutely stop the Reformation. And it was in 1453 A.D. They formulated the Roman Catholic doctrine and said anybody that believes you're saved by faith through grace is anathema. In other words, cursed forever. That's what they said at that council. And they formulated all the Roman Catholic doctrines, and then, if anybody then was a Baptist in any Roman Catholic church, they had to get out. They couldn't agree with the things they came up with at that point. So that's the fourth theory. Well, we can't be dogmatic about any of these. And some of the Baptist historians say, this is the real issue. It's not so much whether there was a church named Baptist in the first century, second century, third century, third, fourth century. The fact is there were people that carried on the principles we, we as Baptists believed under different names all through these years. And so the main thing is, what do you believe today? Are you a New Testament church today or not? That's what matters. Let me tell you something. There's many Baptist churches that are not New Testament churches today. For instance, Mark and Mary Cunningham, <laughs> visiting a Baptist church in Asheville that was more like a Catholic church, they said, than a Baptist church. Uh, unbelievable to see that kind of thing happen. But definitely, uh, you know, the important thing is if you're following what the Bible says that a church ought to be. But I thought I'd mention the fact that uh, in our... Um, Oh, or in this world, by the way, where's the first Baptist church in America? Anybody know that? Or who founded it? Um, anybody heard the name Roger Williams? Roger Williams was, a, was practicing Baptist beliefs in Massachusetts. Massachusetts was a Puritan colony. The Puritans came over here and while they had a lot of good things, a lot of, of good doctrines, they're very Calvinistic, but they absolutely started state churches. And if you wanted to go against them, you were in trouble, and they persecuted other groups. And so Roger Williams persecuted. He fled to Rhode Island, and in Rhode Island, which wasn't a colony yet, he founded that colony, 
but he started the first Baptist church in America in Rhode Island. And Baptists then had freedom in that colony. Gradually, that happened in other colonies until our Constitution came along. And then everybody has freedom in all the states of the Union once our country got going. And then Baptists spread everywhere. A uh, few facts you might want to know. There are about 140 million Baptists in the world. Now, it's hard to tell an exact number because of people like us. The independent Baptists around the world have no reporting agency to know how many members they have in them. They're independent. So there's only a wild guess on how many there would be, and it's believed there might be 1.5 to 2 million independent Baptists in the world. Out of that 140 worldwide, 50 million Baptists are in the United States. Anybody know the largest group of Baptists in the United States? Southern Baptists. Southern Baptists have, just this is off the internet I got today, this comes from Wikipedia, Wikipedia, you know that, uh, organs, Wikipedia? Wikipedia, say <laughs> right. Comes off their statistics, uh, most recent statistics. 14.8 million Southern Baptists in our country. Anybody have I, any idea of the second largest Baptist group in our country? It's an Afro-American organization. 7.5 Afro-American Baptist churches in America. They're the second largest group. Then, anybody ever heard of the American Baptist? They've changed their name. Now they are the Progressive Baptist Churches of America. Progressive fits them very well. Sadly, they're very liberal, the American Baptists are. But there are 2.5 million of them, mainly in northern states. And, of course, Southern Baptists are the largest group in southern states is where they're located. It happened in the Civil War. There was one American Baptist convention, and, of course, at the time of the Civil War, the northern Baptists said we've got to split from the southern Baptists, uh, the, the Baptists in the south. So then the southern Baptists started at the time of the Civil War, and the northern Baptists started. Northern Baptists became American Baptists, and the southern Baptists stayed southern Baptists, and so... But they crossed over each, each other, and so there's American Baptist churches in the south today. There's Southern Baptist churches up here, several in our town. And so, you know, they've crossed over and gone around the whole country. But anyway, I thought it'd be interesting for you to know that there's a, over 50 different groups of Baptists in the United States. How about the Primitive Baptist? Ever heard of them? They're dying out because they don't believe in any evangelism. They think it, whoever's going to be saved will be saved. We don't do anything about it. They'll just fall into church. Interesting. Used to be one in Champaign, but I don't think there's any more here any, any longer. There's conservative Baptist churches. This church used to be one. In fact, all the churches in the IBCI, there's 65 of them now. Well, I shouldn't say all of them, but a big majority of them, because some have been started since uh, the AIBCI got going, but... Uh, most of them are conservative Baptist churches. But conservative Baptists went liberal, and so churches pulled out of it like our church did before my time and became an independent Baptist church, which is what a lot of them had done. Heard of free will Baptists? Pretty big in the South. Anybody know what's the difference about a free will Baptist? They believe you can lose your salvation. Okay, They're the one Baptist group that believes that. Anybody heard of Seventh-day Baptists? They're Baptist in doctrine, but they worship on Saturday. They're different. Their, their doctrine's not Seventh-day Adventists. Seventh-day Adventists are a totally different group, and they're much more heretical. But uh, the Baptists believe like we do, except you've got to worship on Saturday, not Sunday. Seventh-day Baptists, mainly the South again. And how about this? And I thought I'd give you one more. You'll like this name. The two seed in the spirit predestinarian Baptists. Now, I don't even try to explain what they believe. It'd be so confusing. But they believe there's two seeds in the world, basically, God's and the devil's. And everybody's either God's children or the devil's children, and you can't change it. So if you're born a devil's child, you'll always be a devil's child. If you're born a God's child, you'll always be a God's child. Isn't that a weird one? 
There's a lot more to it, but that's the kind of thing they say. So anyway, that's where we are today. Now, the big thing about this matter of Baptist is what do we believe? Why are we Baptists? What should we hold to? Well, there's basically 10 different Baptist distinctives I want to give you in this study. There can be less, there can be more, depending on who you talk to or hear from. But we're going to give you 10 Baptist distinctives. And uh, up here, uh, we put that up there for using actually the word Baptist. We'll use the way Baptist, word Baptist, and this is what we'll be studying in the weeks ahead. But the B, a Baptist, means biblical authority. What do we believe is the final word for what we believe in practice? The Bible. Do you know that other denominations have manuals? have creeds, they call them, that they go by. Uh, and, you know, they follow those. And some things in there aren't biblical. So we believe the Bible is the final answer. We just stick with the Bible as our textbook and our guide. The A is for autonomy of the local church. What does that mean? We believe that the head of Calvary Baptist Church is the Lord Jesus Christ. And here... The pastor and people make all decisions for this local church. Nobody outside this church tells us what to do when it comes to faith and practice. We make our own decisions. That's autonomy of the local church. And that really seems to be the way it is in the New Testament. Now, of course, we realize there were apostles and they had special powers getting the church started. And on occasions, Paul talks about going to a church and I'll use the rod which means he might have to come and exercise apostolic authority to deal with people who aren't doing what's right there. He had spatial powers, which passed off the scene with the apostles. But nonetheless, even in the New Testament, we see churches making their own decisions. Did the apostles say, all right, here's the men going to be the deacons in Acts chapter 6? Uh-uh. They told the church, you select out men to serve as deacons. And the church did that. It was a church decision to elect their officers there in their church. So we believe that's the way it ought to be. Autonomy of the local church. We'll be studying these, each one. P, priesthood of all believers. What's that mean? We're all priests. Every one of us is a priest. Did you know that? We're called a royal priesthood in 1 Peter 2.9. So what that means is we can go directly to the Lord in prayer through Jesus Christ, our high priest. We don't need to go to other men to pray. We go directly to the Lord. All right. S, saved, baptized church members. We believe a person needs to be saved. They need to make a public declaration of that by being baptized by immersion before they can become a member of a Baptist church. Others do not have that. There are a lot of churches today. The big thing is you want to become a member? Come on in. They don't even ask your testimony, what you believe. Uh, they just want members, so they just accept them in. And uh, that's a, a sad thing to do. This is a very exclusive one of Baptists. Next one, T, two offices. Do you know what they are? Two offices in the church. Pastors and deacons. That's all that's mentioned in the New Testament. Oh, what about elders? Elders, presbyteros are the same as bishops. You can see that in the book of Titus and 1 Timothy where it uses the terms interchangeably. So those are the only two offices, pastors and deacons. All right? Separation of church and state. What does that mean? <laughs> this is a big one, too, that separates Baptists from other groups because other groups... When you got the Roman Catholics, you have the Lutherans, you have the Presbyterians, um, not Methodists, but uh, let's see, who else could I call on? Um, but churches, a lot of the main churches had states that had them behind, were behind them. Church of England. Uh, in other words, the state and church are together. Our country, Germany, is Lutheran. So you pay your taxes, you support the Lutheran church in Germany. I don't know if it's that way today, but it was for many, 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 many years. You pay your taxes in England, you support the church of England. Still is that way today in England. In fact, the churches all fold up. 
I mean, they say in those great big cathedrals over there, you might find 20 or 30 people on a Sunday morning. And I've been in some of them when we were in England years ago, and I mean, they're huge. Can you imagine only 20 or 30 people sitting in those huge auditoriums? So sad. If they didn't have the support of the government paying their bills, those churches wouldn't exist over there. Very interesting. But we don't believe in that. We believe that the church is one thing God set up. The government is another thing God set up. They're separate. They have important places, but the government doesn't tell the church what to do, and the church doesn't tell the government what to do. And that's the way that it ought to be. So uh, that's what Baptists believe. We'll go into that more. And then we come to the next, uh, B-A-P, is that the last one? <laughs> oh, I'm really watching. Two ordinances up there at the top, what are they? Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Now, other churches like Catholics have seven sacraments, they call them. But definitely in the Bible, there's just two things the church practiced, and that's baptism and the Lord's Supper. Individual soul liberty, what is that? Well, each of us as an individual are responsible to God for what we ourselves believe. And when people are here in this church and leave here, I hope they don't go and tell somebody, and if they ask them, what do you believe? Well, I believe what Calvary Baptist Church believes. What's that? Well, go ask the pastor. I just believe what they believe. That's not the way to be. Every one of us is responsible to God for what we believe. That's why we're supposed to study the Bible and learn it and let it become a part of us because we're supposed to know what we believe. And that's what this is trying to teach, individual soul liberty. Each one of us knows what we believe, practices what we believe. Nobody's going to come in there and force you to believe anything. That's not the way it should be. You as an individual have to make up your mind. Hopefully you follow what the Bible plainly says, but definitely you have soul liberty. Okay, so I guess I got them all now. Is that right? Okay, went through them all. We're going to study them individually. We'll start with biblical authority on next, not next week, because that's our praise and prayer service. Two weeks from tonight, we'll start on biblical authority and all these things are biblical that we're going to study. So we're really studying the Bible when we study these issues. There are churches that have some of these, but no denomination practices all ten of these like Baptists. They don't. They have something they're off on, on one, two, or the other, like two offices. Most churches have more than that because what do they have? They have groups that are over them, like Presbyterians, have a presbytery that's over all the churches. And those particular men make decisions on where pastors go and how long they're there and keep up with the churches and stuff like that. Methodists are the same way. They have uh, bishops that are over them and keep an eye on what they're doing and decide when pastors go and come. And, and uh, you know, they have hierarchy to all these different denominations. Lutherans as well. They have synods and so on. So... Uh, we're exclusive quite a bit when it comes to that particular matter. And um, uh, so we need to study about these various things. Any questions about tonight? Time's basically gone. John? Is that right? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, see, Baptists have long been, by the world, termed Protestants. But we never came out of the Roman Catholic Church. All these other churches did. They have reformers, they're called. Calvin, Zwingli, Luther, all these men that started churches. And Baptists didn't have that happen. So, But people want to make us Protestant. <laughs> so that's the way they look at it. Any other questions or comments? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for your uh, hand in starting churches. Lord, the first churches were started right by you in the word of God through the apostles. And Lord, we see how they got going. And really, a New Testament church, which we're supposed to be today, 
follows what the Bible has to say. And that's the important thing. Baptists have a great heritage in many ways. We don't know all exactly about how they started and come down through the years, but we know that they've been there because we're here today believing these truths that have been carried on. But Lord, the main thing is that we stay true to them, that we possess the qualities of a true New Testament church. And these distinctives that Baptists have had through the years are biblical distinctives, things the Bible does teach. And we need to hold on to them even in our day and time. Help us to do that. Bless us as we go from here tonight. Give us a good remainder to this week, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.